Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Presence of Light with Charlie Riverman Bergeron. It is indeed, once again, a pleasure to be here with you all on Humanity Healing as part of this large group around the world who are looking at life from the center of their hearts and working towards lifting humanity into its fullness, both spiritually, physically, emotionally, and all possible ways so that we are co-creating the new earth. And uh, I'd like to open with my bowls uh, and hopefully the sound works well here. Just take a moment to allow the vibrations of those sounds to embrace you in fullness as we begin our journey. Good morning. And uh, today's talk was uh, inspired as a result of a very um, tedious week. And uh, when I asked my guides and angels, for something to talk about the uh, the field was blank it was no message and my last message yesterday was one of total frustration and anger and anger at myself and questioning the the validity of what am i doing here all of these moments we all encounter in our journey as um both humans and spirit beings it's interesting how each of us have our own journey, which is unique, yet we meet with these frustrations and issues that we feel we don't deserve or we feel are unjustified. And uh, rather than becoming victims over them uh, and victimizing ourselves for hours and hours, uh, the transition moment is to let it go, to ask. And if there's no answer, then to just look and say, okay, this is what has occurred and, and move on. And so this morning when I get up and I had no thing topic to uh, read, I, I, I picked up one of my favorite books. Um, it's Ili Sayara, The Silence of the Mind. And uh, it was he was a Eastern... European um, mystic, and uh, his words were translated by uh, uh, Patrika Verdes in 2011, and I had uh, an advanced uh, look into his world uh, because I was sent the copies before it was published, and that was uh, an honor that I hold dear, and the messages were just Amazing, each in their own right. And this one is, be still for a moment and ask yourself. And when I read it this morning, I realized that, yes, we ask um, spirit and God and creator and many beings um, that we feel are have more knowledge or more wisdom than we do. You know, what is going on? why are things still happening to me from the past or why can't i realize my future and we come to those moments of silence and what i learned this morning that that moment of silence was so that we can ask ourselves that deep within us we have the answers it's just that we've been relying on a system that no longer works and will no longer work in what I term the new earth, the earth that we're creating energetically through our shifting and changing and aligning with our, our heart consciousness rather than our mind consciousness. 
and and bringing back the balance of the divine masculine and feminine energies. So it's interesting how nobody is left out of this. Yet so many will just deny it and continue the same pattern and repeat it over and over again, much like most of us have done for so many lifetimes, perhaps. Uh, gaining a little bit and opening a little bit, ascending a little bit, uh, self-realizing a little bit, and then coming back and repeating the pattern once again. And I'm not seeing any comments. I see people signing in, but not seeing comments. So um, unless I can open that up somehow. Oh, here we go. Mark Aziz. Thank you. I've, I've, I've rearranged my camera so I can see the uh, program and, and, and hopefully engage with some of you. Uh, if not on this call, at least in the future, and see as it's happening. So that's a new thing, and that came from asking myself how to do this. So again, the chapter is called Be Still for a Moment and Ask Yourself. So the inference is to be still. And when we're in mind chatter, we're not still. Um, we need to... Uh, stop that mind chatter and sink and, and resonate deeper within ourselves. And so I'm going to read parts of it then and talk. And so I begin, be still for a moment and ask yourself, why do you run towards the past? What is the point of reliving the moments which are already gone? All that is old has no value in the present. It is but a fantasy, empty and deceitful. And these are Elisiara's words. Why do you run towards the future? Do you believe it is new? It is but another deceit. Its source, the same, ego. The projection into the future is old as well. It comes from the same source the memory baggage. And when I read that this morning, I realized that this is amazing how we project onto the future what we think we want based on memories of the past or what has happened in the past. And in doing so, we are creating the same situation, but in another form. So until we let go of both the past and the future, uh, we can't be free. And the only way to do that is coming to a point of stillness. Not easy. And most of us can't do it for long. But in that moment, we have to deal with what's coming up within us, the emotions, the energies. And in that way, we can tap into our true self, our true divine natural self, rather than what everything outside of us is trying to uh, force us into looking at or reacting to. Uh, thank you, Liani, for putting that up there. On the link, I, there is links up for how you can follow me. Uh, my Facebook is uh, page is up at the top. It's and I'm on Facebook. I have a blog for those of you who are interested in more. I have a YouTube channel with all these uh, talks on. So feel free to um, join me on any of those levels. Again, this is that's past. All of that is past. It's been created. On the future will be coming to us whether we relate to it from the past or not but we're going to accomplish a lot more if we let go of both past and future and so he goes on to write this therefore the past or the future are not to be sought through them the sacredness of life will never reveal itself it is always newness in the incoming moment. It demands of us what we encounter it with the same freshness. 
It, it demands of us that we encounter it with the same freshness, the moment, the divine instant, the moment right here, right now. As these words come out of my mouth, they, they're coming through my vein. They're not related to a past. They're not related to a future. They're here in the moment. I'm reading something from the past. I'm talking about our future and how we're going to live in the future in a world that's going to be changing so rapidly that we won't be able to keep up with it if we keep looking at the past. And I think that that's what I've been experiencing these first three weeks of January. I couldn't put a label to it. I couldn't put a name to it. Um, it's not been um, the same as I would say, oh, my life is going so fast, as I said before, but it's going quicker in a, and more rapidly in a different way. And it's happening so rapidly that my conscious awareness knows it's happening, yet can't keep track of it. So yesterday, when I was in my, my mess in my own head, I'm, I'm, I'm saying to my, oh, maybe, I'm, maybe I have dementia, or maybe um, this is happening, or, you know, maybe I'm losing my memory. Maybe, uh, you know, I don't understand. Maybe, you know, there's something happening. Maybe there's something wrong with me physically. <laughs> and I had to stop and laugh when I said that. I looked and I said, Charlie, what are you doing? This is insanity. There is nothing going on in this moment. Nothing, absolutely nothing. You're driving a car. And while you're driving this car, you're ruminating about something that happened 10 minutes ago, 5 minutes ago, and soon to be 15 minutes ago. And you're projecting six months from now, a year from now, into the future, that you have some kind of disease and you're, you know, this is insanity. And so it's been an a, a enlightening moment that I've taught myself is that my insanity, most of the time, is created by me. And so we need to learn to look at that and to back off and laugh a little bit about how we have done this to ourselves and we continue to do it to ourselves until we can become still enough to watch it, observe it, and recognize it. And it's, so it's, it's amazing. It's an amazing process. So needless to say, in my journey yesterday, I calmed down and I looked at it and I let it all go and just say, okay, just deal with the moment. What's happening in the moment? You're driving a car, you're doing yada, yada, yada. And, and just focus on that. Just focus on what you're doing. And in that, everything will bring you the answer. It's not God's going to speak to you. It's not your angel guides. It's not your spirit guides. It's not... You are going to answer this for yourself. And the lesson you're going to learn from that is how great a teacher you are. Isn't that amazing? Each one of us are great teachers. And we go around looking for everybody else to be the teacher for us. Others can guide us, like I can guide you with these talks or these moments of sharing. But... I'm not your teacher. You are your teacher. It's your responsibility. It's your responsibility to recognize your great wisdom, your great knowledge. You know more about you than anybody else in the universe because you are living it. Think about that for a moment. Just sink that, sink into that. Nobody knows more about you than you. Even with all this artificial intelligence, with everybody tracking our every move, they do not know what it feels like for your breath 
to reach your lungs. Only you know that. They don't know what your heartbeat sounds like to your ear. Only you know that. And this is the message. We don't ever think about these things because we never stay still long enough. And it's not just physically still, stilling the mind. Really just stopping and stilling the mind, sitting in our energy field, and the minute a thought comes up. So this is the whole principle of meditation, which, you know, again, it just, I think now it's even more important to take those moments and not just say, oh, I'm going to dedicate an hour or half an hour, but momentarily, while we're doing something, just stop. When the mind starts getting uh, all worked up, stop. I'm going to, I'm going to be still, I'm going to be still for 10 seconds. I'm just going to stop long enough to take a breath, take the breath, feel it, bring it into your body, feel it go into your lungs and release it. That little amount of time reconnects you to the true being that you are, that the past goes away, the future goes away, because all you're thinking about is that one breath. So Ely goes on to say, let us, let us be aware of ourselves all of the time, of our wandering thinking. Absurd and selfish in its mechanicalness, it always wants to relieve the moments, relive the moments it enjoyed, and to banish the unpleasant moments far away in the past. Life in its flow brings us joy and pain. They come together and they can be found everywhere. If our understanding is distorted according to our own prison, the same self and its small s self and its deceitful values is to blame. And so this small s self is the one that is being tracked by artificial intelligence. It's the one that's being ruled by laws. It's the one that's being um, talked to and demeaned and, and made to believe things that are not really true, but empower others to control us. It's how we give away our sovereignty. And in this new earth, this, I believe it's the sixth epoch, somebody said the sixth epoch, the fifth foot race, age of Aquarius. It doesn't matter how you look at it. It's a new beginning. It's a new beginning for humanity. And it's going to last thousands of years. We are on the threshold of this. We are the ones who are leading the way into this. And it's important for us to remember that all that happened in the past no longer is real. It's just a memory. And the only real we have is in this moment. And that's what's going to make and propel us into what we call the future. But neither the past nor the future really exist. They're only a state of consciousness. The newness of life can only be encompassed in one way. When we are aware of ourselves without any purpose in mind, we are pure energy, open to the present moment. This is the only way to encounter absolute reality. Isn't that an amazing statement? Absolute reality. It's hard to believe for many of us in the word illusion. It's hard. I remember when I did the 
course, I still do the Course of Miracles, work with the Course of Miracles 20 something years ago, how people struggled with the fact that, I mean, the first 25 lessons were all about realigning your brain to think about it, the world, at, at, to think about illusions and what is real and what is, what's an illusion. I, I then read quantum psychology because I was trying to figure out uh, what happened to me in my near-death experience and normal psychology couldn't give me any answers. They just wanted to ask me questions so they could um, make a little note in their book and say, okay, we'll take three of these and do this and do that and you're fine. Because they they didn't want me to realize that I had jumped out of the box that the, the jack in the box had popped open and everything in their little box was no longer the truth it was a semblance of truth but it was all a manipulation and all a manipulation in order to keep an illusion in place and so much like us we have this dream of how life should be and we unknowingly spend our energy trying to either make that happen or make it align with that vision or spend the rest of the time regretting how we did this, that, and the other thing and, and it's not happening. Instead of stopping and being in the moment and saying, the only time I have is right now. And if I'm dissing on either side of this moment, how can it happen? How can it be possible? How can we truly be ourselves if we're continually holding ourselves to a past vision or a future vision? What is a vision? A dream? A thought? I'm not trying to say that dreams and thoughts aren't bad. They're beautiful. They're, they're signs. They're signposts. And we get them all the time. But what do we do with the signposts? We go by them at 60 miles an hour or 100 miles an hour. And you only have that one little, oh, turn here. Oops, I missed it. <laughs> we do this continually, day in, day out, and we're amazing. We're amazing at how we don't take that moment to be still and ask ourselves, how do I feel about that? Me, the true divine me, not the physical me that's behind the wheel here. The divine me, how do I, the I am, is that in alignment with my dreams and visions? Is that alignment with my past that I'm not too proud of or feel guilty about or etc.? We are amazing, powerful beings. So he goes on, Ely goes on to say, in such a state, we are open to everything without any fears of excesses fueled by the ego. Man is wise, or it could be woman, don't take me as one or the other. Man is wise, I just look at it as human, is wise when free from his self small ass self. He becomes one with the infinite through non-action. And that really just goes against the grain of everything we've been taught. We're taught to act. We're taught to be reactive. You need to do this. You need to do that. You need to manifest. You need to uh, think, program. Man it's, it's all been ingrained in us for thousands of years. And it doesn't mean that we won't do that. We will do that. 
But that isn't the purpose. That is a result of our aligning with the stillness within us. And the contradiction is people think when I go into stillness, I'm doing nothing. And the truth is when we're in the stillness, we become open to everything and everything is happening then. In that stillness, world wars are happening, deaths are happening, births are happening, weddings are happening. People are eating ice cream. People are, you know, dancing. That moment of stillness around the world, so much is happening. And in that stillness, we become attuned to that wholeness. And this is our key. This is our key to the future. It is in that moment when we realize that, that's when we have the power to change all of it. And we change it by when we come out of that stillness to saying, that's not for me. That's, that doesn't align with who I am. So why am I doing it? I'm doing it most of the time because it's a memory or it's a projection. And we become free in the moment, in that moment of realizing this isn't me. I may have done it my whole life, but right now, wow, I don't need to do that anymore. That's the gift of recognizing who we truly are in the moment versus who we are in the past and the future. So the last paragraph here is um, the secret meaning happens in simplicity by eliminating all that was, we live in the new. With a clear, lucid mind, we watch everything that comes in its natural movement. We are the eternal divine. And I pause here. We are the eternal divine. And when we come to really truly begin to feel that and honor it, begin to honor it in some small, small way. It doesn't have to be. We're not, not I'm not here to be a world leader or anything, but my little world. My 12 square feet, square feet of space, perhaps, my energy field. If I just change that and align and bring it into alignment with the truth of who I am, then when I go out and you've done it, everything starts to change automatically for the better, for the good of all. It's really simple. It doesn't take a whole lot of thought. We've been trained to think. Intentionally trained. Purposefully manipulated through our minds. And until we reclaim our minds and put them under the rule of our hearts, we continue to do this crazy reaction to each other and that's all it is we're just reacting to each other we're not living we're not truly living with each other we're just reacting to each other so um i'm just amazed at how taking a moment to just um ask yourself even if you don't know who that is 
shifts your awareness out of the field of chaos, the field of imbalance, and brings it closer to who you truly are. And in that moment, you are free. You are free. One more time, I'm going to say it. You are free. You're free from all that's holding you back or holding you prisoner from being who you truly are. And so never ceases to amaze me how I can fill a half an hour with words and Oh, thank you all for showing up. I'm kind of scanning over the list and I, I didn't get to speak to you this many this morning because I got caught up in my own story. <laughs> but my story is your story and that's what reflections are all about. Presence of light. Create its reflections. My blog is called Reflections of Riverman. And that's what they are. I reflect what comes up in me and I share it with each of you and you can take what you want from it um, and know that your choice is more important than my talk. And if it isn't me speaking, it'll be somebody else speaking. I love to do this because I love to find this out about myself and I love to share it with others. And so with that, my dear friends, I'm complete. I want you to find moments of stillness in your life this week and just sit. And as the thoughts come up, just Hmm, that feels like the past. Hmm, that feels like something, the future hasn't happened. And learn to be comfortable with both aspects of that as perhaps an illusion, uh, a video game that's being played for you to look at and say, which one of these is real? And know that we're not ever going to give up our memory, nor are we ever going to give up projecting a desire into the future. That's what this brain does. That's how it operates. It's the operating system. It's human 5.0. Well, kids, human 6-0 is now here. I love you. I thank you. And I respect you. <sighs> Namaste. Have a blessed week. Make your light shine so bright that no one can hide from it. Bye all, see you next week.